Hi, and in this video, I'm gonna share three types of guys that you want to watch out for when you're out there dating or looking to get into a relationship. These are the types of men that are looking to steal your time and your energy and potentially looking to manipulate you to get what they want from you. Okay, by the end of this video, you will have a deep understanding of the three most common types of takers and manipulators that are out there, not just in the dating world, but in life in general. Okay, so I'm excited to dig into this, but before we do, be sure to take a second, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget to click that link in the comments and caption. I have created some awesome training that is going to make a huge difference in your connections and relationships with men. Now, without further ado, let's dive into this. And I wanna start off with a little disclaimer, okay? The disclaimer is, do not go out of your way to be paranoid that these men are everywhere out there, okay? Not all men are uh, evil. <laughs> Not all men are looking to take advantage of you, okay? This is a very important point I have to make up front, right? Because a lot of women almost end up uh, overly cautious, right? And they, they make up a story that all men are bad because they have a bad experience or they get traumatized. So I, I, I want to start off by saying not all men fit into these three categories. These are three kind of outlier types of men that are out there looking to kind of take what they want from women. Okay, so that's my disclaimer. <laughs> Not all guys are like these guys. But let's dive into it. The first type of uh, guy, and you, this might be a little surprising, is called the orbiter. Now, an orbiter, if you think of the word orbit, what do you think of, right? It's something that orbits around something else. The sun, uh, the, the earth orbits around the sun, right? So an orbiter is a man that is orbiting around you. This is a man who isn't, you're not dating, you're not in a relationship with him, he's a friend right? An orbiter is a friend. He's a guy who, he really just wants to be there for you, right? He's a friend and he says that he's your friend, but here's the thing. He don't want to be your friend. <laughs> An orbiter, these guys are kind of pretending to be your friend or going through the motions of being your friend or putting lip service on the fact that they're your friend, when in reality, they want to be in a relationship with you. They are, or they want to sleep with you. They're sexually attracted to you. And so they sit here in the friend zone, with you, right? And they're always sort of checking in on you. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, how are things going with your partner? They'll send you a text every now and again. Hey, I haven't heard, hey stranger, haven't heard from you in a while. You know, uh, what's going on? I'd love to get an update from you on your life. Guys like this, guys that you're sort of like quasi friends with, guys that you're loosely connected with, and it can't even be people that are your good friends, right? Sometimes these guys, unfortunately, are just waiting. They're just orbiting around you, waiting for an opportunity, They're waiting for a, a breakup, right? Waiting for a catastrophic life event to happen so that they can swoop in and then shoot their shot or take their chance. And why are these guys toxic? Well, first off, because naturally, they're not authentic, uh, legitimate friends. These are guys who want something else from you than what you want from them, right? Oftentimes, these guys are not guys that you're attracted to, right? They're not guys that you ever would think of as someone that you would wanna be in a relationship with. They're just somebody that you wanna be friends with or they, you know, they provide value for you in some other way. But here's the thing they're not in it for the right reasons, right? So energetically, when a relationship is, is on two different levels, when people aren't on the same page, it's gonna be draining to one side. And guess what? If you've got orbiters around you, they're draining your energy. Right, they're draining your energy. And a little, a little, a little side note on orbiters, right, is that sometimes, and I'm not saying you're like this, right? Sometimes some women know that a guy that they're friends with has romantic feelings for them and they kind of, and they, they don't wanna be in relationship with them, they don't wanna go there with that person, but they kind of like the energy of it. They kind of like knowing that this person is attracted to them. It's an ego boost. And I know because I've, I've been, in full disclaimer, I've been an orbiter <laughs> in, in the past, uh, especially back in my 20s when I was, you know, learning how to be a man in a relationship. I was an orbiter, you know, for, for, for women and for some women in, in my life, you know, and, and, and it's toxic. It's toxic for a man to be in a relationship like this without integrity. It's also toxic for a woman to sort of like be feeding off of the uh, romantic or sexual energy from an orbiter when she has no actual intention to ever be in relationship with him, okay? So whether uh, you know this guy's an orbiter and you're just enjoying the attention or you don't know he's an orbiter and you think he's actually your friend, cut him out. 
So how do we identify the orbiter? If he is sending you random texts, you know, uh, every now and again, just checking in on you, checking in on you, checking in on you. If he's always willing to go 10 steps above and beyond to do anything for you at any time, like stuff a boyfriend would do for you, and he's always willing to show up on the drop of a hat for you at any time and sacrifice his own needs for you, and he's just a friend, probably, an orbiter, right? If he always calls you pet names, even though you're just a friend, and he'll make like little, like he calls you sweetheart all the time, or he calls you honey all the time, he calls you like almost like boyfriend type names, and it, it, it sort of like goes through the, talks to you almost as if you're a romantic partner when you're just a friend of his, and he's being kind of flirtatious, but then always being willing to pull it back, like he'll say a compliment about you, and then he'll pull it back or something. Like little things like that, just where it just feels a little weird, the guy's probably an orbiter and he's feeding off your energy and it's not healthy. So cut those guys out. And I'd love to hear in the comments uh, if you're having an aha moment that you've had an orbiter in your life or that you have orbiters in your life, let us know. Let us know what the signs are that help you know that the guy is an orbiter, okay? Now, the second type, the second type I gotta watch out for in relationship and in dating is the, uh, the player or the F boy. Right, I'm saying F boy, and y'all know what I mean when I say F boy, right? The last half of the word, it rhymes with the puck, right? It rhymes with the puck. But because the algorithm, I can't say it. So I'm just gonna say the player or the F boy. These are men who have a very distorted understanding of relationship and intimacy. To them, sex is a commodity. Sex is a, an end goal uh, and physical gratification is their primary thing that they're after with you. They want to, and here's the, they have a really interesting math problem that, uh, that they use, okay? Players, players or F-boys, right? They want to get the maximum amount of uh, sexual gratification and physical intimacy for the least amount of investment. They wanna get the maximum ROI on their investment. Okay, so these are guys that are going to be very uh, kind of like quick. They're going to be very quick to the point. They're gonna they're gonna say, oh, after you've been talking to them for a little while in a dating app, they might say something like, oh, well, uh, let's 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 hang out, right? They don't want to take you out on a date. They just want you to come over to their come over to their house to have a little Netflix, you know, I'll, I'll make you dinner, right? But they're not gonna make you dinner, they're probably just gonna order some food, right? They don't wanna go through an actual courtship process, they just wanna get in close proximity with you as quickly as possible so that they can try to initiate physical intimacy, right? Another way to recognize one of these guys is that they will uh, use a lot of sexual innuendo very early on in getting to know you. They might make a really dirty joke or make a compliment about, you know, your, your chest or something, or, or just, they'll, 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 they're basically gonna say something very sexual very early on in getting, to, in getting to know you and talking to you to test you, right? It's a compliance test to see how down you are, to see how open you are to that sort of sexual dialogue because that'll determine, you know, how easy you might be to get into bed. You know, if they can get you dirty texting within, 24 hours of uh, knowing you, you know, 24 hours of connecting with you, then you're probably gonna be someone who's gonna be easy to get into bed, which then afterwards, right, after they get their physical gratification, they're gone, right, because they're on to the next conquest. Or you might become like an easy source of physical gratification for them for a while until they get bored and they decide to move on. Either way, I know you don't want that. I know you don't want to be uh, objectified and uh, used, right, uh, as a source of physical gratification for one of these guys, right? So if a guy is just trying to short circuit the dating process and he's asking you to come over, you know, right away, he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't seem interested in you, really. He's not asking you a lot of questions. He's just trying to push you towards a meetup or he's making a lot of like really sexual jokes or innuendos or whatever. And then once you finally do meet up with him, you know, he's just staring at you in inappropriate ways. Even if he does take you out for a date, he tries to get you to go home with him on the first night. I mean, if, if a guy is clearly angling for, for sex, and, and if you can tell that he's got an agenda and everything is motivated around physical intimacy, he's not asking you deep follow-up questions, he's not making a lot of meaningful eye contact with you, and everything is designed, he's doing a lot of casual touching very early on in getting to know you and stuff, 
All of these are signs that's, that this guy has got the, he's got the end goal in mind and everything he's doing and saying is designed to try to like push you in that direction as quickly as possible because guess what? He's got other women that he's talking to, right? These guys are playing a numbers game. You know, they're gonna tell the same dirty joke on a dating app to 50 women and see, you know, maybe five, 10 of, like 40 of them call him a pig, 10 of them laugh, and five of them are potential prospects, you know, for them to get what they want. So just recognize that you're in the middle of a guy's numbers game and you don't want that, right? You don't want that. So let those guys out of your life. All right, and a special subcategory of the F-boy is the spiritual F-boy. Okay, it's spiritual F-boy, I had to throw this guy in here. He's got the same desire, right? The same desire to, uh, to be, you know, to try to conquer you, right, physically, to manipulate you into giving him sex or whatever physical intimacy he wants. But he does it through a different lens than like the classic player who just, you know, might be avoidant or manipulative. He's gonna use spirituality uh, because he knows you're spiritual, because maybe you put it in your dating profile, or he can just tell that that's something you're interested in. He might say something like, oh, well, I just uh, I just felt really called to reach out to you because I could tell that, you know, uh, your chakras are out of alignment or something, or he'll wait to message you until 11-11, you know, or he'll call you, oh, sister, your, your divine light is just so magnetic to me. Like, he'll be still running game on you and trying to manipulate you, but he'll cloak it all in, uh, in, in spiritual terminology, and he'll try to be doing it from a really high vibe place. So if you're watching this and you are a deeply spiritual uh, you know, woman who is very clear and open about her spirituality, beware of this. Beware that there are spiritual F-boys out there who are just as ruthless and just as manipulative as the standard edition but they will use all the all the terminology and all the you know the the dogma of spirituality to try to get to you and access you through the things that you hold dear to yourself. So be wary of that and don't fall for it. Okay. Now the last type of uh, man or guy that I want you to watch out for at all costs is the narcissist. And I could do an entire video. In fact, I've done videos on narcissists. I'm going to do another one soon. But narcissists are uh, individuals, which please let me know in the comments if you've dealt with a narcissist. Narcissists are individuals who, uh, because of some deep trauma, some deep wound that they've experienced, or just the way that they were raised, it's a combination of nature and nurture, right? They are profoundly uh, wounded and they operate in a very dysfunctional way. They are incredibly self-oriented, right? Narcissists, everything is about them. Okay, and you, if a narcissist chooses you as someone that he uh, wants to have as his partner, you become his supply. And when I say supply, I mean you are a someone that he is going to manipulate and be abusive towards in order to get your energy, in order to get your validation, in order to get your attention. Because at the deepest level, narcissists uh, feel that they are a type of monster. They feel like there is something incredibly wrong with them. And because of that, they have this endless void need uh, for, for, for gratification and validation from their supply. So there are two types of narcissists that I'm gonna address real quick. The first type is the overt or grandiose narcissist. And these guys are really interesting because these guys uh, have delusions of grandeur. These guys have this, because they've had this deep you know, trauma at some earlier point in their life, they've had a really weird, unique upbringing, they believe that they are God's gift to women, God's gift to the world. A lot of times they believe that they are a type of God themselves, that they can do no wrong, you know? And these type of guys are never, it's never their fault, right? It's never their fault. And uh, they are always looking to get endless acknowledgement and validation and glory from you, okay? So if you encounter a man who is incredibly charismatic, incredibly has a huge personality, but initial, initially upon meeting you, he immediately wants to love bomb you, which is shower you with praise and talk about how much he wants you to be his, how, 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 how your kids are gonna look. He wants you to be the mother of his children. He's talking about this on a first date. You're my soulmate. He's talking about you uh, with this on like the first or second date, right? If he's love bombing you and he's just being incredibly overwhelming with the sort of uh, energy and emotion he's putting towards you, be careful. 
A lot of times the love bomber is a grandiose or overt narcissist who is just doing his best to try to push you into falling for him so that he can then take control of you and then begin to abuse you through the narcissistic abuse cycle. Okay, so be conscious of that. That's a grandiose or overt narcissist uh, trap. <laughs> the other type of narcissist is the covert, right? The covert narcissist. Now the covert narcissist is interesting, right? Because these guys uh, actually believe that they are the, the victim of life. They are completely disempowered. And these guys, instead of trying to bully you and push you into a relationship, will try to guilt you into a relationship. So they will use passive aggressiveness. They will use guilt as a manipulative uh, factor, right? These guys are actually a lot scarier, right? Because they're so disempowered that they'll make you feel bad. They'll try to make you feel bad for not giving them a chance. They'll try to make, they'll, they'll make you feel like you're doing something wrong for not loving them, for not giving them the relationship that they want. They'll try to alienate you from their friend, from your friends, because they might think that a that a friend of yours is is a threat to them, right? So if a guy is incredibly disempowered and he's trying to control you through guilt and manipulation like that, he's probably he could be a covert narcissist, which is also extremely dangerous. Because once you fall into the trap of either of these guys. Uh, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> you're gonna have a bad time because they'll use techniques like gaslighting, which is constantly uh, making, trying to make you think that you're crazy, constantly challenging you on everything that you've said. Uh, they'll use techniques like bandwagoning, which is where they say everybody, everybody thinks that you're crazy for saying this. Like everybody thinks that this is wrong. You know, how could you say this when you know everybody knows that what you're saying isn't isn't valid. Right? They use a lot of different techniques and tactics to try to get you to question yourself and to disempower yourself so that you'll stay under their control. Okay, so if you encounter any of these three types of guys, uh, the orbiter, right? The F boy or the narcissist, I implore you, run. Don't walk, run away from them, right? And uh, recognize that, you know, these guys are not monsters. They're just deeply wounded, but there are so many better men out there for you, right? Men that are uh, honest and in integrity and authentic, right? And if you just get these guys out of your energy, you're gonna have much more time and bandwidth for the men who really matter. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to take a second. Let me know in the comments uh, which of these three types of men you have engaged with in your life, uh, what types of men, and how you, how you identified them. Okay, I'd love that. And uh, so leave some comments down there. Be sure to click that link in the comments in caption because uh, it's gonna give you some, it's gonna give you some great training. It's gonna make a huge difference and it's absolutely free. And be sure to stay tuned for this next video. In this next video, I'm gonna share with you 10 signs that a guy is a player, right? 10 signs that a guy is an F boy. These signs are uh, very, 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 very good predictors of whether or not a guy is out to get uh, into your pants and that's all he wants. So be sure to click that video and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye bye. And the 10th sign that a man might be a player is that they're only hanging out with you on their terms. <laughs> that means they're very controlling and very specific about the way that they'll engage with and relate to you. So they're either only gonna hang out with you at their place or they're only gonna hang out with you at your place and you never see their place.